you don't remember what it was we heard. It is podcasting. <laughs> you are listening to tjb.co.uk. Something in, in that was gripey. <laughs> that was gripey. Yes. They were not griping, they were just No, talking. but you were griping, and I was griping. <laughs> I was not griping. You made me start griping. No, there was something that you were griping about. Mm. Yes. They were talking about the inventory thing. That yes, that's right, inventory. and you were griping about this. I wasn't griping about simplified inventory. Well, I did say that... <laughs> You're going to make me say all that stuff out in the public, out in the public where everybody can hear it. You could get in the boat first. <laughs> I don't even know where the boat's at. Last time I saw you were flying by our house. In the water. There you are. You would think a boat would be in the water, wouldn't you? Well, usually they are. Mm-hmm. Let me turn up the map here. Okay, we are now sailing wonderful Bay City. In a boat, not a goat. And Elle wanted to tell us her <laughs> woes about the inventory thing. I didn't Which have any woes about the inventory. I just said that they, they were making this simplified inventory thing for newbies so that they would learn how to properly organize their inventory. And I just thought if they don't know how to organize an inventory then maybe they don't need to be in second life I mean it's not really that hard don't you learn yeah, especially how to when you're a newbie and you don't have anything in it <laughs> yes. it will only let you have one folder at a time anyway so what would you have oh the, the, the new and improved That's inventory sim- yeah yeah how's that kind of work well I don't know that I've got like 47,000 items in my inventory, so one folder at a time could (laughs) take a while. By the way, Bay City has all these cool drawbridges. When you click that sign, you kind of go up and you can pass them in a larger boat. I mean, you can pass them (laughs) in a larger boat anyway, because the boats are (laughs) not physical. (laughs) But there you go, drawbridge. That's cool. I think it's cool. It is cool. I just remember when I started Second Life, and yes, I had a little bit of a hard time figuring out what my inventory was and where my clothes were and how to use it. They had a, a, I thought, really fun tutorial type thing that you went through and walked through and learned how to purchase stuff and how to change clothes and how to change your appearance. It was Orientation Island, by the way. It was really quite nice, and I I spent several days there because I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing whenever I got out in the big world, because they made it quite clear that once you left there, you could not come back. I remember something that, that actually I remembered that just last week. I, I completely forgot about it. But when I started in Second Life, this was, you know, um, this is now an old gripey avatar talking about the way things were before the war. <laughs> but um, when I started Second Life in um, 2007, beginning of 2007, um, they had on the Second Life website the only thing that they really put there to advertise Second Life was someone. Um, no, apparently at the time, Suzanne Vega, I think, was it, had made a, a performance in Second Life. Suzanne Vega is, um, is an American. Is she American? I don't know. I don't even know her. Right? You're right. Suzanne Vega is, a, is a, an acoustic guitarist uh, lady that has made uh, several nice hits. Um, Tom's Diner is one. Um, Solitude Standing. The whole album is amazing. I, I can recommend you. If you don't have so Suzanne, no Suzanne Vega, um, I recommend Solitude Standing. That's the the album. Um, and she made a performance in Second Life. And uh, 
what they showed on the website was some builder guru back then, I don't remember the name, making her guitar, a, a Second Life Prim replica of Suzanne Vega's guitar for her performance in Second Life. So what they really advertised Second Life with was building. And um, I don't remember them doing anything like this ever since. You know, the, the biggest incentive for people to go to Second Life, well, maybe not for people, for me, uh, has never been advertised ever after that. Um, if you wonder where we are at, these are this is um, Channel Island to the left. Channel Island is home of the Channel Island Asylum. Um, you can probably go back there and have a look at it. Up ahead is Shermerville. The Straits of Shermerville have an amazing bridge. You can, you can go by there. And uh, have a look at it. I think it's the largest prim bridge on the mainland, really. Wow. There we go. Oh. Straight ahead. You're at the bottom of the ocean. I am. True. Can't be. I am. You're sitting right next to me. Mm. What is the region you're in? I'm in Barcola Sand. Did you get my teleport? So, I really liked that, not because the dude was particularly great at building a guitar. I mean, in, in, in retrospect, he wasn't. Uh, at the time, it looked kind of cool. But because of the promise of you being able to build in this world whenever you would like to. Ellie, are you sitting right? <clears throat> the Channel Island um, is actually like the whole of Bay City. The first um, performance of the Linden Department of Public Works uh, it was made in 2008. Um, back then, Linden Lab gathered some of Second Life's best builders and kind of asked them if they wanted to work officially for Linden Lab and make some make the mainland of Second Life look nicer. And the first thing they really did together was Bay City, that is the streets and the canals and everything, and um, to display Bay City's <clears throat> kind of set the theme, they made this asylum at the gates of Bay City, really. That is, you know, kind of dark and, you know, you it is what you would imagine Arkham Asylum to be like uh, if you're a Batman fan. So this is really what greets people when they go to Bay City. 
Space City is located nicely because it is just at the borders of um, the oldest continent of the mainland, which is Samsara. Um, on the second live map, Samsara is on the south west, I think. And um, not far from Bay City, we get to the biggest welcome areas of the mainland, Ahern and um, Morris, etc. That's the four region welcome area. It's here where all the people are. And behind that we get to the old part of the mainland where Second Life really started back in the days before the war. So yeah, okay, um, that's that for the new uh, inventory thing. I really hope they will um, leave the old inventory as an option still in, because if they don't, then that's weird. Yeah, I just can't imagine them getting rid of it altogether. And I don't really think anything needs to be done to it. I'm, I mean, maybe that's because I've just been around long enough that I am comfortable with it. But, I mean, they give you everything that you need to organize it yourself. Yeah, basically it works like uh, computer folders. Yes. And I mean, if you... And anyone who can organize stuff in their operating system, they should be able to organize stuff exactly. in, in the internet inventory. And we learn how to start organizing things by the alphabet in what, I don't know, third grade. So I figure if you're old enough to be in Second Life, you should know how to organize your inventory. I mean, it's drag and drop, you know. I, I do remember the first time I found out that I could make an extra inventory, you know, and put it on the other side and drag from side to side, you know. That, that was quite helpful, and, and I was glad to learn things like that. But I, I don't know. They're always trying to change things and make them better and improve them, and... You know, I, I had a really good experience when I first came to Second Life. I don't know if it was because I didn't expect too much or what it was, but Orientation Island was wonderful, and like I said, I really did... I did the job well. Yeah, I spent several days there and made sure that I, I understood how everything worked before I left because I didn't want to leave and then not know how to do something and not be able to come back and figure it out. Yeah, well, you know, the, the one thing, it's a bit embarrassing, but um, the one thing I really liked about Orientation Island <clears throat> was that you could feel kind of safe there. Um, you were among newbies, so nobody around you knew better than you did. You, you kind of all could just play around with this thing, see what it does, and, um, you know, not be looked down by people who have been here forever and, and didn't want to mess with you. So that was something I really liked about it. Yes, I remember somebody talking to me and, and I not having a clue how to talk back to them or, you know, who it even was that was talking to me. I didn't know how to focus on anyone and, and you know, it, it, it took me a while. That's why I stood there or stayed there for several days, um, just, just making sure that I understood it. And then when I left there, I went to Help Island. Mm. and stayed there a couple of days and uh, I met some other nice newbies there at Help Island 
that were just trying to figure it out like I was, you know. And they had an area that had freebies in it, of course, and I went and gobbled all those up. And uh, I had read on the internet, um, but she had a blog and she made hair I think the hair was called Serena something I don't know but anyway she was a mermaid I remember that but she had a very nice blog and and the blog talked about Second Life and and being a newbie and what to do and what to expect and and I had read on that blog for quite a bit before I came to Second Life and so I knew about um, Free Dove and so I went there and spent several days in Free Dove going through all the, the different things that they had and, and spending a lot of time. Elle was actually created in one of the dressing rooms at Free Dove, so... <laughs> you mean your shape? Yeah. The, what we see ahead is one of the biggest malls on the mainland. Um, and it is actually also a, a linden area in that uh, Linden Lab provides these. And you cannot rent a, a shop there. Instead, they each year um, are doing a lottery where they, yeah, you know, where you can participate. And if they draw you, you get one of these shops for a year. Wow. Uh, for free. Yes, yes. And so where do you put, I mean, do you enter your name? Into yeah, they announce it on the, uh, on the blog, I think, and on the uh, thingy, on the forums, mm -hmm. and on the, the, the splash screen, the, the login screen. So it changes every year then? Yeah, the, the, the mm. shops change. You get, it, get them for a year, and after that, you know, you have to enter again, and if you're not getting draw then you're out well it's a free shop you know gives everybody an equal chance of, of having a shop in second life mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, later on they uh, kind of went away from Orientation Island for reasons that I still don't understand because I think Orientation Island was great. Mm -hmm. Even though the scripts that were supposed to guide you through the tutorial never worked for me. And, um, are you still with me? Um, yeah. Okay. But, um, they kind of thought, they being Linda Lab, thought that we were all better off in, in Help Island. And uh, so when I became a Second Life mentor, then that was where you met all the newbies and uh, tried to explain to them what, it, what this wild, crazy thing is all about. And so when they got rid of Orientation Island, you just got plopped into Help Island and... Yeah, um, well, as a mentor, you you know, nobody can teleport back to Orientation Island or Help Island. The, the original ones where you were, as we, when you became a newbie. There is a public Orientation Island and a public Help Island on the mainland, not far from here, actually. Um, but to the ones that the newbies are, nobody can, can get in except for the Lindons. Um, and the newbies, of course. Uh, and they made this mentor group for people who could, and, and gave them the privilege to teleport there as well. Oh, wow. um, to, you know, teach new people how to use Second Life. And that was basically where you hung out when you were a mentor. You just came, got, went to, to Help Island or Orientation Island or one of the public Help Islands and um, helped people out when they had a, had a question. You know, I mean, from my experience, the, the one question that was most asked is, how do I get off this island? Yeah. <laughs> huh. So, there, with time, you had certain copy-paste answers that you just, you know, knew 
would come up and you would paste them in local chat for I guess maybe I was not your typical Second Life newbie, I don't know. I mean, because I I just, you know, I'd heard about Second Life for a year before I actually got to come into Second Life. I, I started an account, my original account, and then realized that I didn't have the graphics card that I needed to even be able to to come into Orientation Island. And so the account was just dormant for a year. And during that time, you know, I, I kind of played around with it. I mean, I like I said, I read some on that, that one person's blog and, and I just, you know, I mean, I wasn't like in a big hurry to get here, but I would, you know, want a new graphics card. And when I did get one, it was the first place that I came. Uh -huh. And so I had had some time to, you know, kind of soak it up and and get a feel for it before I ever got here. And like I said, I mean, I, I spent days in Orientation Island where most people just, you know, as you said, just wanted to get out. Uh, I remember uh, people saying, you know, how do I get out of here? And uh, I directed them to where they were supposed to go, but I reminded them that once they left, that was it. You know, they couldn't come back. And uh, I, I just took that very seriously, so I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing before I took off. So maybe I'm just different from the average user. Well, you seemed like you spend a lot of time reading about Second Life beforehand. Uh, so you must must have been sh very sure that this is what you wanted to do. Yeah. Why? Um, I was really uh, fascinated by the idea that I could actually have another life. I mean, that, that was really, really fascinating to me that you could go to another place and, and interact with other people and and have a life completely, totally different from the one that you currently had. I mean, I just thought that was amazing uh, to be able to do that. And of course, I knew that it wasn't real, uh, but, but I, I thought it would be really, really fun. And it, it was kind of like an experiment to me. I mean, I thought, you know, maybe the parts that I really screwed up in my real life, I could get right here, you know, or, or things that, that I had done right in real life, maybe I could duplicate here to, to see if they worked again, or, or, you know, just things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, was, I was fascinated with that, that thought. Um, as an aside, ahead we have two maps that are really popular on the mainland, um, that have been made by the NCI of the mainland continents. Um, the left one shows Samsara and Hetero Sarah. We are currently in Samsara in a region called Greg Nano. Um, it's uh, on the map here at Nova Albion of the southeast region. It's not what it says where I'm in it says I'm in Greg Nano. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh. Nova Albion is a four-region um, sim, four-region area of a city-like, um, you know, simulation. It was the first themed uh, area of Second Life before Bay City. You know, the, the theme was a city, so people couldn't just build there whatever they wanted, um, but had to kind of stay within this theme and, you know, one of the specialities of that is that you can't edit the terrain, for example. The same as in Bay City, you can't edit the terrain. You have what you have. I see. Um, next to an overalban SDA and welcome area. And Luskwood and the Oak Roof. <clears throat> and uh, then the, the different sandboxes we'll drive by there. And, um, yeah, go into the into the central sea of the Samsara. <clears throat> okay, 
So, um, Second Life, you, you didn't consider any other thing, online thing, like, I don't know, at the time there were, there was there.com or, um, they had, uh, they still have several other virtual worlds, like active worlds, you know, they've never were really wide known. But, um, you know, you could have just joined a, a different, you know, a multiplayer online game or something. Hmm. Um, no. I didn't, I guess I'd not really heard much about any of the other games like that. I do remember hearing about, uh, is it World of Warcraft? Yeah, World of Warcraft. Um, I think I had heard about that and I was a little bit interested in that, um, but it, I just didn't really quite get it, you know, I mean, I knew it was a game that you played mm. and and you played with other people and I thought, ooh, what if I suck and, you know, <laughs> nobody's going to want to play with me and I just... You know, I just kind of didn't get it, mm. and um, I, I liked Second Life in that, you know, it, it, it was life, mm. and uh, and then once I, I got into it, I was really, really pleased, really pleased. So it was everything you wanted? Yeah, it was everything I wanted. It really was. I mean, I, I got to, you know, create the avatar, you know, that I wanted, and now L was became an extension of myself, uh -huh. and uh, I became much more attached to her than I really thought possible. And uh, I really began to love Second Life, and and you know I, I really didn't do very much. I mean, I explored a few places and and went to a few places like that. I went to a few nightclubs, but that was really not my thing. Uh -huh. I don't know, it's not my thing, and it never has been my thing in real life, really, and, and I guess it just wasn't here either. Um, I just, I loved shopping. I loved trying on clothes. I loved looking for sales. Uh, I loved having a house and being able to decorate it any way I wanted and, and have it stay that way and always be clean and... Um, I, I loved Second Life, and I, at the time, had been quite ill in, in real life and found that my time in Second Life um, made me feel better. And, you know, nobody believed me, or if you, if you tell people something like that, they think you're crazy. But it, it really made me feel better. I mean, it, it was a, a time that I could set aside for myself to come to this world that was perfect in so many ways and um, I could be who I really wanted to be while I was here and um, <clears throat> whenever I would put Elle to sleep every night before I left her I would <clears throat> make sure that she was in a safe place and a peaceful place and and lay her down and leave her there. And and I had a very, when I left her there, I myself had a very peaceful feeling uh, because I knew I had left her in a safe, peaceful place. And um, so, you know, people can call that crazy or, or you know, whatever they want to call it. But, but I knew that, that that was true for me, so. You know, if it worked and it made me feel better, what, you know, what harm was there in it? I mean, it, you know? Yeah, I know. It wasn't a drug. It wasn't, didn't cost anything, really. It, you know, I mean, it... That's true. And for Second Life, that's one of the great benefits of Second Life. That is absolutely free to use if you don't want to spend money and you mm -hmm. don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, which is not the same for World of Warcraft, as far as I know. I used to come and camp. I found, when I very first came in World, I found this place that was really great, and I don't think it's there or not in the capacity that it was at the time anyway. Uh, I don't think it's there anymore, but you could go and you could camp for like eight hours at a time, and you didn't get a whole lot, but you got 
oh, I think it, I don't know, it was like 30 or 40 lindens for mm. that time, you know, and I would camp every day, you know, <laughs> I would just go and sit, you know, while I was cleaning house or whatever, so that um, I could get money, extra money, you know, to be able to spend. In fact, back in the days, I remember that you got 250 lindens when you signed up. Yes, yes. Yes, I got in at a really good time because I did get, I know I got some money when I signed up and then I got 500 lindens. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think 250 first and then 250 after a week or so. Yeah. So I got in at a really good time. It's not like that anymore. No, it's not. By the way, this big as this really massive build we are looking at is the region Gibson, which is under complete control of um, Nexus Prime. Oh wow. Which is um, they <laughs> had it for the longest time, and they are kind of dedicated to cyberpunk builds, hence the name. Uh, when I very first started in Second Life, this was the, really the thing that kind of got me hooked and I called home. Um, it changed over time, so the region looks very different today than it looked back then. Um, but it's a really nice, nicely made. I will have to come back and revisit this yeah. another time. <clears throat> oh, this is all new, isn't it? Yeah, they, they made it completely new. Wow. Yeah. So another thing Elle wanted to talk about... Share with you... What? 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 Who? You. I'm flying over the map. This is region crossings for you in Second Life. They just are loads of fun for your money back. By the way, um, what we are looking at for us is another region crossing. What we were looking at were the sandbox islands, uh, the sandbox boxes of Second Life official ones if you want to put it like that um, <clears throat> let me turn off drawing distance so they won't rest they're always fun to be in there's always lots of people around building stuff, trying things out. They're called Sandbox Island. Um, and they're just numbered, I think. And, um, in, you know, in the vicinity of them, there is, um, there are vehicle sandboxes for vehicle text testing. Elle wanted to share her woes about being a fashion blogger because being a fashion blogger is lots of <laughs> lots of fun. You get you get paid royalties for every sale. You know they pay like like one hundred and twenty dollars per sale. Oh yeah. And and you get all all outfits free for for life. Forever. Of all the creators of the grid. From everybody. Yes, from everybody. That's just you know you you part of it. you sign up and and automatically get delivered everything for free. Oh. And um, so yeah, it's the best thing you can ever do in your second life. Well, it's been very interesting. I will 
I will give you that. I had no idea when I started on this journey that it would quite take me where it has. Um, but it's because I, I, I have to kick you to everything. Well, a little bit sometimes. Um, but it, I really enjoy it. I, I really love what I do, and, and I have a lot of fun with it. Um, but you know, it is that is what it is. It's fun. It, it's just a hobby. It's it's just what I do in my spare time or when I feel well enough to do it. And um, unfortunately, L takes forever to make a picture because everything needs to be perfect. <laughs> So that is one of the reasons why um, her output isn't bad. I usually strong. just I just do one to three posts a week, uh, depending. You know, sometimes I try to get out of what I call it a quick and dirty, which is just pictures and and styling notes. And, but I like to at least have one a week where. I talk a little bit and share with you, you know, why I'm wearing what I'm wearing and what I like about it. Um, and, and that takes considerably longer and I've kind of had to, to curb. My problem is that I want to take like 10 pictures and, and I do want them all to look perfect. And I, you know, want to talk about them. And, you know, so it really runs into a lot of times. So I've had to kind of figure out that I don't have to take 10 pictures, that a designer doesn't care if I have 10 pictures, one picture is fine with her as long as I get a picture up. And uh, so I've, I've learned a lot of things along the way and, and sometimes um, some of those things are not necessarily good. And um, I, just, I just wanted to make sure that before I went off on this rant, that I made it known that, you know, it's these are not my current designers that I work with. I, I have a yeah. good set of designers that I love and they're patient with me and, and uh, they produce some amazing material and, and it's wonderful. Now we've been waiting for this to, uh, until the designers you didn't like yeah. or wasn't <laughs> blogging anymore. So well, what was it that I didn't like them even? I, I liked them. I just didn't like the way things were handled. And I guess it's, it's you know, the, the way that you look at things. Because I understand as a creator uh, that there's a certain pressure on you, um, for most of the creators, to be able to support themselves with their creations. And, you know, one of the ways that, that you can do that is through word of mouth, you know, people hearing about what you do. And the best way to do that is is to have someone that talks about it. And, and this is kind of where your bloggers come in. And, you know, I have had a few uh, that I have applied for um, ask me, you know, you do understand this is not a paid position. And, and I'm like, well, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know that bloggers could get paid, uh, but I've since learned that, you know, there, there are some that do, you know, that's what they do, they blog and you pay them for that service and, and that's what they do, but that's not what I do, you know, I just do what I love for fun because I can, and so, and because you get all the outfits of the grid, <laughs> I wish I did get all the outfits of the grid. But uh, you do get some review copies from creators, and they are very nice, and they're very wonderful, and, and I'm so appreciative to be able to have those. Uh, you know, I have some beautiful, beautiful clothes from creators uh, that were freely given to me uh, so that I can blog them, and I understand that responsibility. I truly do. Um, you know, the problem is that there's just one of me and there's lots of creators and they all want to be blogged and when you only do one to three blog posts a week, sometimes it's hard to get everybody in there. And um, so, it, you know, that, that can be uh, rather difficult. I, I had a creator once that, that I worked with that I felt didn't handle that in the best way and uh, made me feel pressured 
to um, to blog her stuff and uh, it wasn't that I didn't want to I, I loved her stuff and and was happy to be able to blog for her but I just couldn't do it as often as she liked it and it was not personal it no, was um, and to be perfectly fair most of the time it wasn't even the creator themselves but their manager as staff person who was kind of trying to manage the bloggers yeah it was supposed to be a blogger manager and, and I felt like it was just not handled in a, in a proper way and uh, I felt threatened a lot of times by some of the things that were sent out to the group not to me personally uh, but they were sent out to the group and, and they were consistently uh, of the nature that you know how come you're not blogging you know we're, we're checking the blogs and, and if you don't blog our stuff then you know there's going to be cuts made and you know if you really loved our stuff then you would blog it and, and we're just letting you know because we're going to be cutting bloggers and I just got to where I couldn't handle that and uh, you know one day I, I wrote the creator and, and the blogger manager and asked them to please not refer to me in that manner that I had been threatened many many times in real life and I didn't come to Second Life to be threatened and you know as I said I there there's a, a common assumption among people far and wide on the grid that bloggers are freebie hunters that we are freebie seekers and that's the only reason we blog so that we can get free stuff and yes, we do get some free stuff, and it is wonderful. But, you know, I tried to let them know. I, I would think that someone that, that was truly a freebie seeker would want that free material so that they could take it. I mean, there would have to be a purpose for it, right? They, they would be able to take that, that free merchandise and, and wear it out to their favorite party place or... Uh, to enter in their next contest or to do something with it, right? But I don't do anything. I mean, when I come to Second Life, I'm, I'm only here to blog or to take pictures for the blog or to be here with Vanish and do a video blog. I mean, I'm never in Second Life to socialize. Uh, I, I do like 90% less socializing than, than I did before I started blogging. Uh, I mean, I don't even talk to my friends because I'm so busy trying to take pictures that, you know, I feel like I need to take. So I, you know, I'm not, I'm not just trying to get free stuff so that I can have a good time with it. If I get the free stuff, it's so that I can take pictures of it and promote your creations. I, I cannot blog what I do not have. Yeah. So if and I it doesn't even mean that that what what you do get, you also like. I mean, you know, you're blogging things that you like, and if you get stuff that you don't like, then yeah, well, sorry. Yes, it, I mean, I I won't blog things that I don't like, um, but you know, I just I really hate that, and and so I just always felt like that um, with that particular group that we as bloggers were not really. Um, appreciated that, that uh, they felt like they were not getting what you know their bang for the buck and uh, I often felt like saying you know if, you, if you're not happy with what you're getting from your bloggers then you know hire a blogger pay them real money oh. to blog about you and you know then you'll have something to really gripe about when they don't because you paid money for it and they are per supposed to provide a service you know that's their job that's what they get paid for they're not doing it free they're not doing it as a hobby they're not doing it when they just feel good they're not doing it whenever they have the time they're doing it as a job because you pay them for it and so sometimes I guess you do get what you pay for but you know most of the time I think yeah, it's kind of give and take you get free um free stuff they get free blog entries they get free advertising that's yeah. right and and I try to be very careful about it you know vanish gets on to me all the time because I 
may have an outfit that I really like, but I'll say, oh, well, I don't want to wear that because that creator is no longer in Second Life. And he'll say, well, you know, you just blog what you like, which is true. I do want to blog what I like, but I realize the power that I have as a blogger. And I want to be able to give that as a gift, like people give me gifts to creators that really are in Second Life and are trying to make a go of it. So I, I've gotten very conscious about that now, where most of the time, if it's a, a hair from a creator that's no longer in Second Life, then I'll change it and, and put one on uh, from a creator that's here, because there's a lot of good stuff from creators that are here in Second Life and are desperately trying to, to have a business. So I try to be very conscious about what I do. I, I really take it seriously. And so I get hurt when, when people accuse me of, of just being a freebie seeker or of not loving this stuff. So anyway, <clears throat> Vanish gets tired of hearing me gripe. So he... <laughs> yeah, you will have to write about this Oh no, yes. I said it. Why do I have to write it now? This was just a warm up. Oh. Gee. There's a nice lighthouse up ahead. <laughs> You're a punk. <clears throat> to be perfectly honest, I think it's a problem of expectations. I mean, um, we, we being TGIB, is a blog that is, uh, I think, of a me medium size. We, we are not small, but we are not big either so maybe we get our, our fair share of, of, of visits uh, per day uh, I think we're uh, you know currently at a uh, thousand visits per day roughly and um, not all of them are our else entries uh, about fashion though right. I mean the most hits that we get are still for the one porn that I have on the site <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe we should do more porn. Yeah, I, I thought about that. <laughs> Fashion porn. Yeah. <laughs> you like that, don't you? I do. I do. It's it's mm -hmm. even better than 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 uh, In investigative fashion. Investigative fashion. I like investigative fashion. <clears throat> it's kind of like the CSI of fashion. Yeah, you're just not doing it. <laughs> So we have to do something else now. <laughs> so now we get to do porn. Yeah. Can it do investigative porn fashion? <laughs> fashion porn. Investigative fashion porn. Yeah, that is where we are investigating while screwing. Oh, well. <laughs> Sounds like In fun. fashion, no less. Yes, of course. Fashionably. I believe, I, I, I bet nobody has ever done that before. Maybe you first. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've ranted. It's your turn. Yeah, I'm stuck in a region crossing. But we've probably already talked an hour, haven't we? Isn't it time to... Nobody wants to listen for two hours to us. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, I've been... Oh, 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 I crossed the region. we got to cross. I crossed the region. <laughs> Look at that. Woohoo! And, and, and I'm going! You're going! You're going! Going, going, gone! I really wonder if these are really private parcels. Or, no, no they're either. not. They're all <laughs> linden reed, linden things that can be discovered. Trust me. These are really cool things, actually. I mean, I don't know what this is, but it looks cool. It's like an observatory or something, isn't it? Yeah. Um, an underwater observatory thing. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't see anything pointing at the sky. Yeah. There's some cool things on the mainland, really. And then they're adding stuff to it, you know? I mean, all of this hasn't been around last time I was here. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, well then, um, let's adjourn here. Well, before we wrap up, I need to talk about what I'm wearing. 
Oh, you have to talk about what you're wearing. Yes. Uh, I didn't spend three hours putting this outfit together not to talk about it. Okay, well, I'm wearing um, an outfit from Bear Rose called... Called... Um, what's it called? Kaiko, I think. Kaigo. K-E-I-G-O. -E um, the ha hair is from Kin. is actually a, a freebie. Uh, I think it's still on the marketplace. I got it a while ago and I changed the color, but it's from Kin. The uh, shoes you don't see, but they're red graves as usual. Skin is myself, and um, the boat is from AIM Radio. was a group gift, I think, at one point. Um, Montreal. L. Oh, is it my turn? You said Antoel. That's what it was. I thought I'd have been some kind of French word or something. Antoel. Okay. Antoel. Antoel. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, when Vanish told me we were going to do this, I told him that that was fine. I would gripe if he wanted me to as long as he let me put together a really cute outfit. So all night long I laid in bed and thought about what I wanted to do. Um, and this is a brand new mesh outfit. A uh, little skirt is mesh, let me put it that way. Uh, from Sis Boom. And uh, it's part of a new collection um, that she has going. And honestly, I can't tell you all that much about it. Um, During the three hours we discovered that boots don't work with it. <laughs> I discovered the woes of mesh, and, you know, things that I've heard people talking about. This is actually the very first mesh anything that I've, I've really worn. And so uh, when I very first tried it on, um, I had on the curvy version skirt and I was like, woo, where'd that butt come from? And then I realized it wasn't mine. And so, oh, it was the skirts, but yeah, I kind of had to tone that down a little bit. But uh, it's part of a new collection from Sis Boom that she's doing. It's supposed to be a, a vintage type look, um, and I just think it's really, really cute. I really liked it. Um, so I wore it today um, with some beautiful red and silver accessories from Ear Candy. Uh, if you've not been to Ear Candy, you need to go by there. They've got some super cute jewelry at a really good price. Um, and the creator is just one of the nicest people I know. And, and I just love her. Uh, she never pressures me to blog her stuff. She, she just is really, really good to me. And so I love Maeve and I love her work. And uh, you need to take a look at Ear Candy. This skin is uh, the brand new skin from Essences um, called Elena. Don't you love it? Don't you love that name? That's a good name, huh? Yeah, that's because uh, you from you actually um, kind of suggested it. I did, you're right. Yes. Uh, the creator Inka was having a, a brain freeze and, and couldn't figure out what to call this new skin, so she was asking for suggestions and I threw out, I don't know, like 20 different names that I thought would be attention getting. And at the very end yeah, of it, among I said, them, <laughs> at the very end of flippy it, Flippy Ploppy and <laughs> I said, Grunt. Or <laughs> you can have my all time favorite, Elena. And just kind of, you know, laughed it off and never thinking that she would really take that seriously. And she picked it, she liked it, and she named this skin Elena. So I was just over the top. I'd never had anything uh, named after me. So I think it's an adorable skin. And it comes uh, in several different um, skin tones. Um, and, and one of them is even native. I'm assuming that's to be a Native American tone. Uh, Inca's really good about doing um, ethnic tones, different uh, you know, some that are Latina, some that are, are African American. She, she does a lot of different uh, types of skin tones like that and does them very well. Um, 
And it comes with, of course, cleavage options. And uh, I think there was. Which you can't see in this outfit unless you Yeah, I know. It was kind of a waste. It takes up some stuff. No, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it comes with uh, lipsticks. And this is uh, one of the red lipstick colors. I think there's nine. Uh, different lipsticks that come with it or 12 I don't know the bunch there's a bunch of them um, and so I, I was just very very pleased but it's Elena from Essences um, shoes are from uh, In Her Shoes um, which is totally free um, if you hop over to that shop or her other shop which is uh, Vignette uh, that does hair uh, everything there is free or on a donation basis and uh, she does some really cute little shoes all different kinds of different colors color chain shoes um, and and does some really really nice hair as well if you've not been to in her shoes you need to do that and grab some of those uh, shoes and, and then over to vignette for hair speaking of hair um, I had the creator of Pocket Mirrors send me, well, send out a review package of some of her hair. And I had followed Pocket Mirrors for a long time um, as my other avatar. And um, when, I, when I became ill, I kind of, I don't know, lost touch with Pocket Mirrors and I didn't hear anything from her for a while. And I tried to find her once and I went through search and I couldn't really find her. And, and then lo and behold, she's in one of the blogger groups that I'm in and she sent out um, this uh, review demo package. And uh, I tried on the hairs and I was just amazed at how beautiful they were and how good they are. And I knew she was always really good at, at particularly vintage uh, hairstyles. But uh, the ones that were in his demo pack were just amazingly beautiful, and this was one of them. So when I decided to put this look together today, I, I couldn't wait to, to get this particular hair. So I ran over to her shop and, and bought uh, the brown pack so that I could wear it and show it for you today. I believe it's called uh, Sabrienne. Uh, semi updo and uh, in all fairness, it's not brown. Yeah. It looks kind of great. Great, but it's just a, it's a dark brown. Okay, I mean, well, for the record, it's a dark brown. Even that's what it says. I didn't make it up. It says dark brown. Uh, okay, okay, brown fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <sighs> Sorry to disturb you. He just likes to, to take advantage of the fact that I'm colorblind. No, that's not true. Yeah, well, it looks what great. Is. Anyway, I, I loved it. I think it's adorable. Um, and something else that I had to do yesterday was the grand opening of Icon, which is the new fascism. If you are familiar with fascism eyes, um, Icon Inovia, the creator, I uh, decided to rebrand fascism and start Icon. And so um, yesterday was the grand opening and I thought I'd stop by there today and see what he had and I picked up several different colors. Um, this one is Trojan Blue. Um, it's, it's, they're interesting, they're different from the set that he had before, of course, or then they wouldn't be a different set, I suppose. Uh, but I think they are just really quite lovely and can't wait uh, to photograph them and see how they're going to look in uh, pictures. So uh, be sure and get over there and take a look at uh, some of the new creations and eyes that uh, you have at Icon. Uh, nails are by Finesmith. Uh, Finesmith is not known in particular for their nails, but she does some really, really nice nails. I love the shape of her nails. Um, and so they're, they're just a simple, solid color. Uh, they've got some diamond trim on them. Uh, but she's so 
beautiful solid set from Pine Smith Designs. Um, Yeah, eyelashes. Huh. Yeah. 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 There. Kitty. Grand. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. Um, all. Uh, nobody ever listens until this point, so I'm just going to say <laughs> thanks a lot and um, see you next time around. Bye. But how am I going to sit looking cute if we're traveling the grid? You're sitting right next to me while I am driving. Oh, you're gonna drive again. Yay! <laughs> so lame. <laughs> you're in a boat. You are in a boat. You're going to streets in a boat? <laughs> yes, yes, that's, that's the idea. Oh. We're going it street fishing. Like <laughs> what? It messed up my fingernails. The boat. Yes. Messed up your fingernails. Yes. I cannot tell you how sorry I am. Almost drowned. 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 Okay. Mm. Oh. Maybe you should turn the AO off. <laughs> As an idea. Are my fingernails all right? Yes. Sorry, but the system was unable to complete your region crossing in a time of Today's topics include. This is your part now. Hmm. Oh, I'm supposed to say what they include? Yes. Oh, I don't have any idea. <laughs> oh, my fingernails are messed up. Ellie, nobody's going to see your fingernails. I see them. Yeah, no, I haven't either. <laughs>